a player who left his mark on the poker world and became one of the biggest legends of gambling. Prepare to be dealt into the gripping saga of Stu Unger, where every hand is a gamble and every bet could mean the difference between glory and ruin. So join us as we journey through the life of one of the greatest poker players in history. Stu Unger, famously known as The Kid, was a prodigious poker and gin rummy player whose life was marked by extraordinary talent, immense success, and a tragic downfall. Let's go back in time to see where his whole story started. Born on September 8, 1953 in Manhattan, New York to Jewish parents Isidore and Faye, Unger's early exposure to gambling set the stage for his remarkable career in card games. And guess who played a big role in his career? His father, a bar owner and loan shark, introduced him to the world of gambling at a young age. So in his younger years, he showed an extraordinary liking for games that required higher IQs. He had an amazing understanding of risk and reward that set him apart from his friends. Stu even won a local gin tournament at the age of 10. Skipping 7th grade and eventually dropping out of school in 10th grade, Unger quickly made a name for himself in the underground gin games in New York. Just a teenage kid holding up his own against seasoned players, using his incredibly sharp intellect and natural talent to beat his opponents. What do you think made him different from the rest? Let us know in the comments. Stu's rise to fame came very smoothly to him. Due to his practice as a teenager, he quickly earned a high reputation as a powerful opponent who was feared and respected by the ones who went up against him at the poker table. His sheer ability to read his opponents and measure the odds with lightning speed made people call him by the nickname The Kid. After transitioning from gin rummy to poker, Unger's skills at the table were unmatched. Often described as ruthless and brilliant, he became a legend in the world of poker. Stu Unger had amazing achievements under his belt, including winning the World Series of Poker WSOP main event three times, a feat shared only with Johnny Moss. In 1980, Stu Unger came onto the mainstream poker scene when he won the World Series of Poker main event at 26 years of age. This news sent shockwaves through the poker world as he defeated his opponent with skill, intuition, and audacity combined. So where did he go wrong? What caused his downfall? After all, he was an incredible player. Stu wasn't known just for his victory, but also the way he achieved it. Stu's unexpected playing style, followed by aggressive betting and calling bluffs so confidently that his opponents couldn't seem to read him. He seemed to possess some sort of supernatural ability to guess his opponent's moves, which made people think that he had sold his soul to the devil himself. Eventually, winning the World Series of Poker blessed Stu with major fame, making him a household name overnight. He started appearing on talk shows and magazine covers. People started calling him a genius of the game, but despite all the fame and money, there was something dark lurking around the corner that would cause his downfall. He also clinched victory at Amarillo Slim's Super Bowl of Poker three times and secured five WSOP bracelets during his career. With over an astonishing amount of $3.6 million in tournament winnings and estimated lifetime earnings exceeding $30 million from various card games, Unger's success was undeniable. However, despite his unparalleled success in poker, Stu Unger's life was scarred by personal struggles and addiction. His story took a tragic turn with battles against drug addiction and personal demons. The highs of his poker career were overshadowed by the lows of his personal life, leaving behind a legacy that is both inspiring and heartbreaking. Stu's addiction to gambling led him down a dangerous path that would soon prove to be his undoing. He started making reckless bets and risky investments in his fortune, careless of the consequences that he would have to face. Moreover, as the years went by, Stu Unger's life began to unravel. After his mother passed away in 1979, Unger started using cocaine. Initially, he used it for recreational purposes to maintain his energy and stay awake during extended poker sessions. This was common among other players too. However, Unger's recreational use unfortunately developed into an addiction. 
It was a serious addiction that, together with gambling, transformed into demons that would torment him for the rest of his life. This even affected his marriage, as Unger and his wife Madeline eventually divorced in 1986, just four years after they married. Madeline expressed her concern since her ex-husband would frequently vanish for days playing cards, doing drugs, and was generally unprepared to handle the simplest habits of everyday living. His cocaine use grew, eventually doing damage to his frail 5-foot-5-inch five five frame to the point where his friends doubted he'd live to see his 40th birthday. Combined with an obvious gambling addiction, which was not only playing poker and blackjack, but also included betting on horses and sports, Unger's continual demand for action would eventually lead to his ruin. Before we unfold his downfall, don't forget to subscribe for more poker content. As a last resort to get back into the poker world, Unger attempted the 1980 main event. However, on the third day of the event, he didn't show up to the poker match. No one was able to find him, and eventually, he was found unconscious in his hotel room due to a cocaine overdose. Due to his addiction, he did not finish the event, but he ended up in ninth place and won $25,050 despite passing out because of his massive chip advantage at the moment. And then, seven years later, deeply in debt and visibly, physically impacted by his cocaine use, Unger entered the 1997 World Series of Poker main event with $10,000. This was provided to him by a friend, Billy Baxter, just before the tournament started. In fact, Unger was the final player added to the roster shortly before registration closed. However, Unger didn't believe he'd make it through the first day, but friend and fellow player Mike Sexton supplied some much-needed support, and he had a photo of his daughter Stephanie in his pocket that inspired him to keep going, and he called her regularly to keep her up to date on his progress. Unger was so highly respected that he was declared the odds-on favorite to win the tournament, which he accomplished, becoming only the third person in poker history to do so. But even after making history, Stu Unger still spent his WSOP prize money on cocaine and sports betting. He tried giving up drugs, but unfortunately relapsed after a few weeks. Baxter offered to pay his entry fee again before the 1998 WSOP, but Unger admitted to not wanting to play due to his worsening drug abuse, physical condition, and fear of embarrassment. He became scarce and began smoking crack due to damaged nasal membranes. Stu Unger was left with nothing, and his name slowly faded from the walls of poker history. He spent his final years doing drugs, thinking about all the memories of what he had lost and what could have been. At a young age of 45, Unger died in November 1998 at the Oasis Motel in downtown Las Vegas. The autopsy identified trace amounts of drugs in his system, but the coroner ruled his death due to a heart condition caused by years of substance abuse. Bob Stupak covered all funeral costs, leaving Unger with only $800 to his name. Stu Unger died alone in a motel room, an extraordinary man who had lost it all. But his legacy lives on, warning people of the hazards of addiction to gambling and no proper ambition. Stu Unger was more than just a poker player, he was a tragic figure, a modern-day Icarus who flew too close to the sun, which ultimately burned him. Although his story may have ended tragically, his legacy will be remembered for generations to come, a reminder to not cross the boundaries of things that can end up in disaster. We hope you enjoyed the video and let us know what you want to see next. Sadly, he didn't live a life long enough to escape the claws of this addiction and get out unscathed.